Hey guys, today I want to share with you how I got my trail name and why I don't use it anymore. So I got my trail name famous in 2018 when I hiked the Continental Divide Trail. I had probably a decade of backpacking experience before the CDT, but I wasn't a through hiker. And, you know, I didn't have any through hiker friends, wasn't, didn't really have any involvement in the through hiker community. I was just, just a backpacker doing it, you know, for a couple of weeks a year. So anyhow, I showed up in Lordsburg, New Mexico at the start of the CDT and everybody's there at the motel. It's kind of the staging area for CDT hikers. And, you know, here I am, I'm kind of a nobody. I don't know anybody, nobody knows who I am. And I'm just sort of trying to figure out what's going on here, you know? So I spent two days in Lordsburg before the hike. And one day I'm walking up to the store, I see a couple of hikers walking down the street. And I say hello and they recognize me as a hiker by my hiker clothes and they introduce themselves and they say, oh, you must be Eric. <laughs> and I'm kind of sitting there scratching my head and stuttering for a moment. I'm like, well, yeah, but how do you know that? It's a little weird, right? And she just says, you're famous. And I'm like, all right, what the hell, you know? So all day it's, you know, hey famous, hey famous, the next day, you know, hey famous, and it just, it just stuck. And eventually found out that she had known my name from one of the posts on a CDT Facebook group a couple of uh, weeks earlier about who is starting on what day. Of course she didn't mention this and had a little fun with me for a while. And I thought it was a fitting name because here I was this nobody essentially trying to hike the CDT, no prior through hiking experience. And yeah, famous. Thought I was a bit of an oxymoron and yeah, cool name. So I went with it. But as I settled into the CDT, started covering some miles and it started to feel like home for me, uh, the trail name sort of lost a little meaning for me. And I kind of realized that when I saw that, you know, people were making the assumption that I got the trail name famous because of all the camera gear I was carrying. I had a big heavy camera on my uh, shoulder straps on my backpack and a GoPro with a gimbal. And there was this kind of assumption that, oh, okay, you know, the camera gear, famous, okay. And I was like, no, that wasn't it at all. So I enjoyed having a trail name on the CDT. It was, it was fun, and for a while it felt like it meant something. But after the CDT, I just stopped going by it altogether. And, you know, for a lot of hikers, you get a trail name that's just a reference to a single moment in time or a single incident that happened. It's not really a true reflection of, you know, you. And... I don't know, for me, I guess if I'm gonna go by a trail name or a nickname or something, I want it to mean something to me and be a more accurate representation of who I am as a person and not just this thing that happened one time, you know? And I've met some other hikers that feel the same way about their trail name. And I remember starting the CDT with a hiker named Camel and he got his, his trail name on the AT when, uh, I guess he never drank water like just throughout the day, he would just camel up at the water sources and then never drink throughout the day. And halfway through the CDT, he ended up dropping his trail name and just wanted to be called by his birth name, Forrest, which sounds like a trail name anyway, so it kind of works out. And he just didn't feel a connection to the trail name Camel anymore, you know? Came from a different trail, different people, and it was just one of those things that it, it, it was no longer reflected who he was today. Another point to be made is that Trail names are generally more common on the popular, you know, triple crown trails. And when you hike a lot of other trails that just don't have that same social experience, you might not find trail names as, as attractive or as easy to get, I guess. Uh, there just isn't that same culture, you know. But on the CDT, it was fun to be a part of that, and I can see why people do it. Um, but yeah, like after the CDT, I was, I mapped out and hiked the Basin and Range Trail, which is about a thousand miles through central Nevada. I'm the only one out there doing that one. And then uh, I did another like 600 mile hike called the Mojave Sonoran Trail, another route that I created in 2021. And again, you know, you're the only one out there. Trail names become meaningless at that point. You're not gonna tell people in town what your trail name is and there's no other hikers to talk about, you know, the trail with. And if you hitch a ride, you know, people don't know what you're doing. So trail names just, become meaningless unless there's other people to interact with, I guess. Either way, your trail name should mean something to you. If you truly love that moment in time for which your trail name came from, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you find yourself no longer connected to your trail name, it's all right to drop it altogether or just to shop for a new one. 
You know, tell people that you're shopping for a new trail name and see what they come up with for you. Hey, you can always turn it down. For me, I think I'm all right with not having a trail name unless something really good comes along that really fits me, you know? Well, that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.